In the short documentary that you are about to watch, you will see and hear from one Filipina Giacometti telling her story of leaving her small town in Gubbio, Italy and moving to New York City aboard the Italian ocean liner SS Andrea Doria. That's in 1956. Nick Banyan, a local newspaper reporter, is there to record her story for his paper. Elena Giacometti's Filipino daughter, who's also a lawyer, is there to help add loosely the changes that immigration has gone through since 56 until present day. Hey Frank, Nick here, man. And listen, I'm I'm at the Giacometti house, and I'm gonna I'm get, getting ready to meet with them. I ran over the questions with you earlier. I I, I you know, I was just calling you to see if there was any last minute uh, suggestions. Okay, right. Well, I'll let you know when I've uh, finished up here. I think it should be interesting. See you, man. This is Giacometti. Good evening, Mr. Banyan. How are you? Great, thank you. Good to see you, Elena. Good to see you, Elena. Come on in. Looking forward to right. it. Come on in. My mother is so, so nice looking see you this forward evening. to this. Yes, ma'am. going to chat for a minute if you don't mind. It's not too soon. It's okay. a pleasure. Very nice. Nice. Well, thanks. So here we are. Do you mind? I'm gonna. So I don't have to take notes. I'm gonna record us, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay, dear. This this won't this won't be painful at all. Yes, I'm doing a little story. Uh, 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 Elena may have told you I'm doing a little story for our newspaper up in Frederick, and it's basically you know it's a it's a month long feature of you know Italian influence on you know the area and just the you know the Italian American presence in in our readership. Maybe you could just. You know, give us a little bit of a intro. Um, how long have you been in this country? Many, many years. I came <laughs> in this country in 1956. Okay, you, do, and, your, and the travel over here was very interesting. Could you take me through that story? Yes. To the time you left Italy? Tell me, tell me how, that, how the journey I, began. I left from Italy in Naples mm -hmm. around the afternoon, and the next day, I had a baby. <laughs> so you were already expecting a child when you yes. left. Yes. And was did they eight give eight months? Eight months. Eight months pregnant. Okay. Did they give you any idea whether you were going to have the baby on the boat? No. What did they tell you? They told me I had a little difficulty because they didn't want me to live in that condition. I don't blame them. <laughs> what, what did your parents think of that? They were very upset. I'm sure. And there I was too. Okay. So I was crying. But what did the doctor tell you? Were, were you expected to have the baby on the boat? No, absolutely. They did the some test that they were not supposed to do it. Okay. They they made my baby come early. Because they did the test. Exactly. You think? Exactly. That was your sense as the mom at the time. Exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, the name is Andrea. Uh -huh. Because the name of the boat was Andrea Doria. With Andrea Doria, which has a, fa a very famous story uh, of its own. It, so what happened to that ship? It, it sank later on? Yeah, I, I was already here. Right. The, the Andrea Doria sank in July, and they arrived here in January. Right, January. Andrea was born in okay. January of 56. So what, what happened when you arrived, where, did you, where did you land in, in the United New States? In New York City? New York City, and I was just uh, terrified. <laughs> Did you speak English at the time? No, at all. Not at all. I'm not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yes, sound you great. Are. You sound great. No, let, it's let quite ask, the story. Let me ask you, when, when, so Andrea is Elena's older sister? Yes. And you named her after the, the, the ship, the Andrea Doria. Andrea Doria. And, and, and the captain of the ship, tell them. Yeah, the captain was the godfather. And the, Calamari. Yeah, Piero Calamari. And the owner of the Italian line was Elisa Cernesi, hmm. was, was the daughter of the captain. Fantastic. And uh, so I arrived in New York. Let me ask you, did the press small. cover your uh, arrival? You, you came from a fairly small town in Italy. Exactly. Where, where was it? In, in Umbria? What, what town? Gubbio. Miss Giacometti, uh, your mom has shared with her her story. We were, mm -hmm. we were wondering, you know, I know you're an attorney, and uh, I think our readers would also uh, want to get some perspective. You guys came here in 56, your parents, right. you were born later. You were born here. 
Uh, where were you born? I was born here in 1958, so I was automatic U.S. citizen. I think with respect to my so sister. Were you guys still in Providence when yes. you were born? Yeah. Okay. My sister, uh, since it was an Italian ship, she had her Italian citizenship that way. Mm, interesting. However, um, when they became U.S. citizens, she automatically received yeah. hers as well. So she has dual citizenship. They actually were asked to renounce. She was it. born on the Italian ship. Correct. Yeah. Fantastic. So she gained her Italian citizenship sure. that way. And somehow, these two, my mom and dad, had to renounce their Italian citizenship once they got their U.S. citizenship. In the 1980s, tried to uh, relax the, the the immigration, you know, allowing amnesty for people that had come in illegally in exchange for border uh, security, you know, increased border security. Mm -hmm. And then maybe Obama expanded upon that. Now we're kind of, you know. Ironically, I think people are surprised to hear that Obama's administration was was very aggressive in deportations and things. They actually were. Yeah. With respect to illegal. Illegal and now, of course, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a big, big brouhaha uh, politically. Yeah. Now going everyone on. knows what's going to happen now. Right, but from a legal perspective, has it really changed materially from the law, as far as the law is concerned? I, I think it has. I think I, absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. you, it has. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, yeah. Now they're clamping down. I know they've got this sort of you know amnesty seems to be the four letter word that no one no one really is right. Although, as I said, Reagan had instituted that back then. Right. So, some folks are not that happy to hear how important immigrant workforce really is in exactly. this country and how exactly. potentially damaging it could be to just have it evaporate suddenly. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a success story right here. Yeah. This one. So, well, it it's, it's, it's been a real pleasure uh, visiting with you ladies and uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank Jill. you for sharing your Very story nice. with us and we'll, we'll pepper a little bit of that uh, legal insight in there. Not too much. We'll, it'd be mostly an interest uh, piece about you, Mrs. Giacometti, and the family Thank history. you. I'm very glad to be here. Yeah. The land of opportunity. <laughs> exactly. Yes, and of course. All right, Mrs. Giacometti, thanks so much for your time. And uh, I'm sure my readers will uh, very much appreciate uh, the, the opportunity to, to hear you share your story. Thanks. You're welcome, Mr. Benyon. <laughs> Good night now. Good night. <laughs>